Hi, I'm Dr. Catherine. Camp Praxis is a science specialized center for IGCSE and A level. Let's start our experiment now. Hello, we're from Camp Praxis, and this video will be covering question 2 from paper 3, October November 2020, variant 5. In this experiment, we'll be reacting some hydrochloric acid with sodium thiosulfate. We'll investigate how changing the concentration of the thiosulfate ions affects the rate of reaction. We'll measure the rate of reaction by measuring how long it takes for the mixture to become too cloudy to see through. Take note that this reaction will produce some sulfur dioxide gas, so make sure that you empty the contents of the beaker into a quenching buff after you're done with the experiment. Using a 50 cm cube measuring cylinder, we'll measure 40 cm cube of Fa5. Transfer the Fa5 into a 100 cm cube beaker. Using a 25 cm cube measuring cylinder, measure 20 cm cube of Fa4. Now we'll add the Fa4 into the beaker. Start timing immediately. Stop the timer when the mixture becomes too cloudy to see through. The reason why this yellow precipitate forms is because the thiosulfate ions react with the hydrogen ions to form sulfur, sulfur dioxide, and water. After you're done with experiment 1, you'll carry out experiment 2 using 20 cm cube of Fa5 and 20 cm cube of distilled water. You'll use the same volume of Fa4, which is 20 cm cube. Once you're done with both experiments, record all your readings in a table. Make sure that your table includes settings and units. You can calculate the rate of reaction using the formula given. Now we'll move on to part B. A student suggested that the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of thiosulfate ions. State whether your results support this suggestion. Explain your answer. If you look at the table, the volume of Fa5 in experiment 2 is half of the volume of Fa5 in experiment 1. This means that the concentration of Fa5 in experiment 1 is double the concentration of experiment 2. Since the concentration is doubled, the rate of reaction of experiment 1 is also two times more than the rate of reaction in experiment 2. Therefore, our result supports the statement in part B. Now we can move on to part C. The student's suggestion in B could be made more reliable by carrying out further experiments. Prepare a table to show three further experiments you would carry out. Show clearly the volumes of Fa4, Fa5, and distilled water that we use in each of these experiments. Make sure that the volume of Fa5 is not more than 40 cm cube or less than 20 cm cube. If you look at experiment 1 and 2, the sum of the volume of Fa5 and distilled water is always 40 cm cube. So you should also do the same for experiments 3 to 5. The volume of Fa4 will still remain constant, which is 20 cm3. We're done with part C, and this will be the end of question 2.